What is up, watch fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're gonna to be talking about three modern watches that will appeal to a vintage watch geek like me. Today, I'm wearing a vintage watch. I'm wearing a vintage Patek Philippe Calatrava, a watch that uh, you'll all be hearing about um, very soon, actually. It's a watch that's very important to me. Um, it's not mine, per se, but there's a great video coming out about it. And if you don't already know, we here at Theo and Harris actually just give away a watch every single month, um, a watch that we know and love to a lucky subscriber. So all you have to do to enter is subscribe to the Theo and Harris channel and sign up down below. It takes like six seconds. Okay, uh, so the first watch, it, it's actually from a brand that I have historically not given much praise to, and I stand by the reasons why I haven't given them much praise, but nonetheless, I am warming up to some of their models. The brand is Grand Seiko. Do they have a marketing problem? Absolutely. Would I love to help them? Yes. Will they ever call me? Probably not, but I love this watch. It's the SBGW231, and I hate that long reference number. It's like impossible to remember, but the watch is worth remembering. It's powered by the 9S64 movement, which is a Seiko in-house manually wound caliber. Of course, completely manufactured in Japan. And this watch is perfect for a vintage geek. It has all of the hallmarks of what we enjoy and admire in vintage watches, specifically dress watches, like from Patek Philippe or even more appropriately, Seiko. It appeals to nearly everything that vintage watch lovers enjoy, like size, formality, and simplicity, but has some slightly more modern proportions. This watch gets a big thumbs up from me, and with a retail tag about $4,700, and I know you can get these in the threes, it's an amazing deal. The second watch here that I know vintage geeks will love is the Marno Dark Surge. It's a little bit larger at 42 millimeters, which does make sense because it is a sports watch, but that size does appeal to the modern wrist. It ticks all of the form and utility boxes we'd be looking for, like 300 meters of water resistance, great legibility, and a 42 hour power reserve. But here's what's most important, why I think that the Marno Dark Surge would appeal to a vintage watch geek. To me, it's so reminiscent of, of a vintage oddball, not of the Submariner, which is the inspiration for so many of today's dive watches, but of a vintage Vulcan nautical cricket. While the dial was inspired by a sea urchin's shell, rather than that vintage Vulcan, I still find it very funky and old world and, and retro. So big props to Marnell. Now the last watch on my list is one of my personal favorite watches of all time. It happens to appeal to vintage geeks, which I am, but Everybody has to at least admire this piece. And since the first watches we covered were basically $600 and $4,800 respectively, it only makes sense now that we jump to a watch um, at like $70,000, uh, which is Patek Philippe's new world timer. It's the reference 5231J, which is super reminiscent to the vintage world time, the reference 2523. I love when I see brands, Patek in this instance, update a piece, actually change it, make the new watch not an homage, but thoughtfully evolve their heritage. I think Patek has done an absolutely wonderful job here. It's certainly not cheap. I think the $60,000 range, which is an absolute fortune, but we like to keep the variety wide here. Uh, so that's it, guys, thank you so much. If you love watches, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to Theo and Harris. Shoot us an email if there's anything in the Theo and Harris watch shop you have a question about, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. This is a f***ing disaster. It's okay, we won't address that, that's fine. Okay.